need to take the step of faith mm. and to be available yeah. because God is waiting for people who are available. Mm. Hello everyone, my name is Alex. I'm a missionary in Tanzania, East Africa. We are working among the remote people groups and something that I realized working here is that everyone has a voice. And especially being in those remote areas, I saw God moving through everyday people and building His kingdom. But not everyone is going to be seen by the majority of people. Most people are going to stay hidden. But today we have a privilege to hear one of those stories or one of those people. And uh, I have my friend, dear friend, uh, yeah. David with me. Uh, he's going to share with us today about um, how God has been uh, moving in his life, yeah. his testimony. Um, and also uh, we've been friends for over a year now and what God has been doing uh, since uh, we've joined together. Yes. So thank you for joining me today, David. <laughs> yeah, and Rosa, thank you for coming and the, to have this conversation. Yes, I'm very excited how it's going to go. Uh, we're here at your house. <laughs> yeah, you're most welcome. <laughs> thank you. Your oh, wife has you. prepared us tea. <laughs> yes, it's very nice tea with a lot of spice. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. this is way, the way we love it. And in Tanzania, I know people love um, spicy tea. Yes, yeah, yes, with spices. very nice. And even when this guest comes, they can even come here to test this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. And yeah, today, uh, I want to really listen from you, David, and just hear your story. And... I think let's just start um, just with the beginning. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, tell me about uh, the way you grew up, and tell me about your family and what um, what was faith like for you growing up. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity of mm -hmm. sharing my testimony mm -hmm. because I know through this, most many people are going to be touched mm -hmm. and they, to come to Christ because we all experience this through testimonies of other people. Amen. Yeah, my name is David Derek Mosi. Uh, I was born in Serengeti, Mara mm -hmm. region, uh, Tanzania. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm the only one in my mom's womb. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, I can say, sorry. Mm -hmm. oh, go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was born in a Christian family. Mm -hmm. uh, press where people they knew about it's a Pentecostal background mm -hmm. yeah so we grew up my mom she used to take me to the uh, Sunday schools mm -hmm. to learn about Jesus mm -hmm. and the uh, I had a nice moment there of grow uh, of knowing Christ but I was by then I was still very young mm -hmm. to have a full understanding of about who God is. So I started my school there in Serengeti. Mm -hmm. uh, 2001, I started my, my standard one. Mm -hmm. You know, here in Tanzania, we have standard one, standard two, yeah. until you reach standard seven. Mm -hmm. So when I reached standard six, mm -hmm. my mom wanted to go and increase it, uh, her education capacity. Mm -hmm. So uh, I tried to shift from where I used to live in Serengeti. Mm -hmm. Then I shifted it to one place called the Kilimanjaro region. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it's the north part of Tanzania. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, somewhere called the Moshi. Mm -hmm. So when I arrived there, I remember I was supposed to shift from my religion, mm -hmm. Pentecostal, then to enter to Thabas SDA. Mm -hmm. They call them Seventh Day Adventist Church, mm -hmm. where their belief is about catching the day Saturday. <laughs> so before that, when my mom came with this idea of me shifting to Moshe, mm -hmm. I was feeling like I'm going to lose my religion. Mm -hmm. And I remember I cried. That why am I going to start this new kind of religion, which I don't know. Mm. And also, I was afraid to lose my Pentecostal background. Uh -huh. So, I began to cry, mm. crying, crying, crying. But later on, uh, I found the courage through my grandma. She told me, that all, the, all those people are believing God, so mm. you can just go there and continue with saving the Lord. Mm. Yeah, so after that... I remember when I reached there in Moshi, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I was a very faithful kid to Thabas Church. Mm. And we used to catch scriptures, and I was very nice in catching scriptures. So I was so memorizing. Yeah, memorizing. Mm -hmm. So most of the people, they come to know me through that. Mm. Yeah, that this guy he can memorize mm -hmm. a lot of scriptures yeah. and he, with accuracy. Mm. So I continued. We have this. They used to have like uh, stages mm -hmm. from. Uh, according to the age. Mm -hmm. So there is the age where you reach, where you can be transitioned to another stages. Mm -hmm. There I was uh, adventurers, there I was pathfinder and the ambassador. So when I was reaching there in Moshi, uh, according to my age, I was supposed to enter in pathfinder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, yeah. So because pathfinder were about, it was supposed to be about twelve years. Mm -hmm. So I joined pathfinder. Okay. So we used to do those uh, parades and do mm -hmm. like militaries. Okay, so it was a, a group in the church yeah. that you joined and you found yourself in that group um, being uh, part of the church. Yeah. Yeah. And then how did that influence your faith? Like what did it make, like you said you're from a Pentecostal background. Yeah. So now you come into a, a different um, belief system. So how did it affect your uh, walk with God? Yeah, of course, uh, I was to adapt a new change mm -hmm. as a kid because I, I, I left my Pentecostal mm -hmm. beliefs yeah. so I can start this new kind of belief mm -hmm. to catch the Sabbath. And it, because we don't have nice teachings in the Pentecostals concerning uh, knowing what Jesus has done. Okay. You see? Mm -hmm. So we came to realize that we are not even teach about about this covenant mm. the old covenant and the new yeah. covenant mm -hmm. so when you go there and you don't have nice foundation concerning that you're ending up of, uh, believing that this is a way to believe mm. god like to catch sabbath and to yeah. catch laws which so the, the discernment is not very strong yes yes mm. so you can even try to rebel against those pentecostals when mm. they come to you uh -huh. We said to tell them, like, you know, uh, we are, the Bible says the seventh day is Saturday. Mm. Uh -huh. And also you're supposed to catch the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And even those Ten Commandments, yeah, yeah. you're supposed to, uh, to, to, to catch the, the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. You see? So I come up with an idea of, okay, this is right. Yeah. So I'm supposed to catch this mm -hmm. and live with it. Yeah. You see? Mm -hmm. So that's why I say, like, we don't have this nice foundation to understand the covenants. Yeah, and I think also, of course, you know, there's different churches with different beliefs. Yes. Uh, and I know that um, in the Pentecostal church, people are emphasizing the Holy Spirit uh, because of the uh, Pentecost. Yes, <laughs> the day of the Pentecost. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the Holy Spirit comes with fire. And yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and um, I don't know much about the Seventh uh, Seventh Day Adventists, but I. Remember you shared with me that also uh, during your time uh, at the church, you kind of uh, start backsliding. Yes. So wh what was that for you, like to backslide from actually following Jesus? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, we are only teach to catch the Sabbath mm -hmm. and the, to be faithful to catch the rose. Mm. But for sure, those things will never give you a conviction. Like, you don't need to do this and this and this. Mm -hmm. So, even if they were preaching, but even those readers, they are committing mm -hmm. sins and you mm -hmm. can even see by your own eyes. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. So, it's just like you're talking, like mm -hmm. you're advising someone to not do something because mm -hmm. there was a no power which can make you to, 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 to rest sin. Mm, yeah. So, you were relying on yourself instead of the Holy Spirit to yes, guide you. Yes, and, and because uh, I remember one day the church elders stand and trying to preach mm. and he was preaching about other denominations and mm. he said like those people they tend to say that they are speaking in tongue. Mm. They are speaking to demons. Mm. So okay. we all believe that those people are okay. speaking to demons. Wow. Mm -hmm. You see? So I was thinking like okay, speaking in tongue or oh, the Holy Spirit is just like a you can just talk about him, mm. but not experiencing that oh, okay. power in you. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. So later on, even if there are 
if you live without the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. it, you're ending up yeah. uh, doing some stuff which is against God. Mm -hmm. And you don't even realize that you are. You, you may feel bad in mm -hmm. your heart that I've mm -hmm. committed sin, mm -hmm. but the way to lift that sin is not yeah. easy. Mm -hmm. you, you come and feel guilt, but later on you go and do it again. Mm -hmm. Come feeling guilt, and the, <laughs> that's why in Thabas the usual when they see like, when you feel like you have done sin, mm -hmm. you have sinned, uh, you were supposed to go and be being baptized again. Okay, so there's a multiple baptisms. Yes. Okay. For oh, for 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 uh, eradication of. Sin. Okay, so this, it means um, there was not a belief that you've become uh, like uh, righteous through Jesus. Yeah. So you have to become righteous again and again and again. Yes, you're supposed to go again and again into mm. the waters just okay. to be cleansed. But for me, I can say, water is like a sign, mm -hmm. not like the actual thing which can make someone to be cleansed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Those people, they believe like if you commit sin, you can go again to be baptized. Mm -hmm. So, I want to kind of uh, uh, come back to your personal experience. Yeah. And share with me, okay, you've um, become now part of the church. Uh, you start learning a new doctrine. And then uh, you, you told me that you had to, like, you felt like you didn't want to sin, but you continued to fall into sin. Yeah. So... Um, how would you describe like your relationship with God in that moment? Yeah, of course. Uh, I remember even when I get like short breaks to go back home in Serengeti. Mm -hmm. My mom, she usually told me, Dave, can you go to church? Mm -hmm. Then I was feeling shy to go to the Thabas there and because my family is from Pentecostals. Mm -hmm. So I become to rebel against the church. The Sabbath and mm -hmm. also the Pentecostals. Mm -hmm. So I was stagnant okay wow well. not going anywhere mm -hmm. you see and later on uh, a new habit start to generate within me mm -hmm. so i start to drink alcohol okay wow well. see mm -hmm. uh, I sp after finishing uh, my uh, primary level education mm -hmm. then i began my secondary level education mm -hmm. so from one up to from four that's the secondary mm -hmm. level education so when I reached like form two, mm -hmm. uh, and at that time I was about 14 years, so I started to drink alcohol wow. at 14 years. Wow. So young. So young, yes. Mm. So, and I began like new habits which were not very good. Mm -hmm. You see, even if we tried to go to the Sabbath, but mm -hmm. nothing changed us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically you fell into um, sinful behaviors. Yes. Uh, but you still believed in God. Is that yes, right? yeah. yes, yes, yes. So you still you, believe. You, you, you believe God is there. Yeah, yeah. And you can do everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. And even in your studies, you always pray to God that God, you know, now I'm going to approach exam. <laughs> so please, God, can you help me to perform very well? Yeah. But in, deep inside, you know that I'm a sinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and okay. So I think we'll come we'll come back to your story, like especially how you met God later. Okay. Uh, but I know that uh, you were growing up. You had only your mom. Yeah. You said you were the only child, and I know that you had a very uh, close relationship to your mom, yeah. uh, mother, and she was a very influential person. Yes, actually. Uh, for you, pers uh, especially. Yes. Uh, share with me a little bit about your mom, and also uh, what did she teach you? Uh, especially also about faith. Yeah, of course, I can say my mom, she encountered God where she's, she was still very young. Mm -hmm. So she had this conviction that God is very strong. Mm. And she has a very f nice faith to God, that God can do everything. Yeah. So my mom come from such kind of background. Mm -hmm. She was like, I can say a missionary mm -hmm. because she used to go in different places to preach the gospel. Okay. Yeah. So but just by herself or with a group there of were, people? There was like a small group from the church mm -hmm. where I think they were touched by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. So they used to walk 
a very, very long distance mm. to reach people with the gospel. Wow. And I remember one day she shared with me, like, birthday, I remember one day I go to one village mm. and preach it. And later on I came to uh, uh, a, a small bush mm. where we were coming back home. I, then I, 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 I stopped there mm. and uh, tell God, God, if you know I'm going to back to see me again, please, can you take me right now? <laughs> wow. So you can see such kind of faith. Yeah, and then also a desire to stay pure, right? And then just, yes, yes. So uh, that yeah. she cannot die in a sinful nature. Mm -hmm. So she can just be there, righteous before God. Yeah. So she can enter into heaven. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we are preaching almost... People are, are, are always they preach about going to heaven. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. like continue to do the work of Christ here on earth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so my mom, she was a very nice woman, you can say. Mm -hmm. And she was... A, a woman of his own decision, mm -hmm. so she can when, whenever she decides, <laughs> she decides it mightily. <laughs> uh -huh. So she's she's very confident and yeah, she's gonna she's do it. Yeah, she's very confident that these things is going to happen, mm -hmm. no matter what people are saying. Mm -hmm. And the, another thing she said, like, definitely, you know what? I don't have much friends mm -hmm. because I know through that I can create hypocrisy friends. Mm -hmm. So I have to be by my own, or sometimes. Like one friend, but mm. not such a, a closest f uh, relationship, mm. because you know women uh, they always have this fighting. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand her. Mm -hmm. So what I've learned from my mom, she was like my role model. Mm. Yeah, according to what she has been believing, and also uh, how she has been teaching me the ways of God. And I remember when we were. I was still very young. I uh, was still young. I was. I used to see my mom praying to God, mm. kneeling down, praying. Mm -hmm. So and also she will. She will usually call me to join her, even though I don't know what I'm praying. <laughs> <laughs> I will be there mm. kneeling down, and so what she did. So and also in giving, she also teach me how to give. Mm. You see. To the church and even to others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, when we go to church, we went to church with her. Yeah, uh, she she usually give me something to give. Mm -hmm. So I I, have, I I ran through that that wow. we're supposed to give. Mm -hmm. There we see like a, a lot of breakthroughs through mm -hmm. giving. Yeah. So she, she taught me that. Mm -hmm. You see, but also uh, she taught me how to live with people. Mm -hmm. She said, like, Dave, you need to have wisdom. You are a man. Mm. You see? And also, you are a reader. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can go anywhere. You can live anywhere. Mm -hmm. So you're supposed to have wisdom. Yeah. You see? And one day, I asked, I, I asked her, my mom, why, how, why did you call me Dave? Mm -hmm. What was the motive behind calling me Dave? Mm -hmm. You see? Then she told me, like, Dave, you know, my my father used to be called the to to call the David, mm -hmm. so you are like my grand my grandfather mm -hmm. uh, is in Swahili uh, name called the Daudi. Okay. So in English is David, mm -hmm. but she said like no I I, I doesn't call you David because of my father's name, mm -hmm. but because of the Bible. Okay, yeah. that's why also you introduce yourself not, not as Daudi, yes. as David. As David, always. Mm -hmm. not, you, you'll never find me calling myself Daudi because mm -hmm. this is a Bible background name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, yeah. she told me like, I, read, I used to read the story of David mm -hmm. and how he used to work with God. Mm -hmm. So that's why I've called you David, mm -hmm. you are the minister of God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, so she saw you as being minister, like from, from the very, very, very beginning. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the, uh, I remember when I was still very young, uh, when I was born, mm -hmm. uh, I, I count a lot of challenges with my health. Mm -hmm. So my mom go before God mm -hmm. and he told God that, uh, God, Please don't take this kid away from me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, don't give me another kid mm -hmm. so I can remain with this one whom I see. Mm -hmm. So it's just like a covenant between wow. her and God. Wow. Mm -hmm. You see? So, me living like now is a miracle. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. a covenant. 
Yeah. Between my mom and God. Wow. That's amazing to hear, you know, how much your mom has seen in you. And also just in the spirit, I think, right? Like the yes. Holy Spirit probably revealed to her, you know, about who he has created you to become. Yes. And then that your mom was in such a close relationship with God uh, to be able to see it and also to release you. Yes. Um, I, I think, uh, what, yeah, I think uh, I'm kind of going ahead of, of the story, yeah. but I want to include this in this part of, uh, of you sharing. Uh, eventually, uh, yeah. your mom, she passed away. Yes. And uh, I know that just before she passed away, uh, she uh, blessed you. Yes, yes. So yes. can you share this part about like her mom, your mom, gonna um, in her lo last moment, right? Like yes. uh, speaking a blessing over you. Yeah. So let me uh, start by saying this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After finishing my secondary education, mm -hmm. then I tr I transitioned into university. Mm -hmm. Then, after reaching there, uh, the place where I, I encounter God, mm -hmm. you see, like a true conviction mm. of God yeah. in my heart. So, uh, after that moment, I try even to share the, the, those kind of belief to my mom. Mm -hmm. That right now I have changed the <laughs> and I have become now mm -hmm. a minister of God. We used to travel here and there with my uh, fellowship group to preach mm -hmm. the gospel. So my mom desires was me to become a doctor mm -hmm. or a very good, a very big person. I don't know mm -hmm. what she was is in her head <laughs> or in, in 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 her mind mm -hmm. because. It seems like he wanted me to be like a, a, a very influential person, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you see. But she doesn't have a clear discernment mm -hmm. of where uh, a place where I become influential. Mm -hmm. So she's trying like to touch uh -huh, uh -huh. a doctor. At <laughs> one moment, she wanted me to become an engineer. <laughs> so those positions which are respectable here in in the community, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not just to, to the to the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I remember I tried even I uh, to shift from different causes <laughs> because I was not clear which cause is suitable for me. Mm. So I shifted from become a doctor, then I went to do like a business administration course. Mm. Uh, later, uh, before I finished the course, I went back home. Mm -hmm. After finishing the, the, that level of mm -hmm. education, I went back home mm -hmm. and waiting to another level. So when I was there, uh, my mom, she usually liked me to go to school and to accomplish mm -hmm. a lot of stuff con concerning school. But when I tried to ask for the enrollment in, other dif in different universities, mm -hmm. they rejected me. Mm. Even though I have all the qualification to, to be yeah to be accepted, accepted, yeah, but they fail to accept me. Mm. So I sit down and try to call my fellowship readers from my uni from our fellowship in the university. Mm -hmm. So he told me, David, can you ask God, what is the purpose of you being there? Mm -hmm. Then I said, okay, thank you for your advice. Then I will go and ask the Lord, why am I supposed to be here? Mm -hmm. So later on, I went and prayed to the, to the Lord and asked God, why are you want me to be here? Yeah. Then suddenly, my mom, she started to feel sick. Mm -hmm. So I was the only one to take care of her, mm -hmm. you see? So I tried my level best to make sure that I'm very close to her so yeah. she cannot feel lonely or mm. feeling that bad, mm -hmm. you see? So I tried my life best to make sure that she's doing great. And even I was praying to God that, God, if you are going to heal my mom, mm. that day I'm going to strip a very nice strip because there was a lot of battles. Yeah, yeah a lot of movements, a lot of stuff 
cooking, mm. whatever and whatever. But I remember one day in the night, um, my mom told me, Leslie, I know you are the minister of God, mm. and the, I just want to be close to you so you can even pray for me and the ever small conversations. Mm -hmm. So I said, you are my mom. You can come so we can sleep together here. Mm -hmm. You see, so I can pray for you and take care of you. Mm, you see, yeah. so she came to my bed. So mm -hmm. we, uh, we have been there and they mm -hmm. help her with some small, small stuffs. Mm -hmm. Like whatever she asked for food, I will yeah, go and yeah. bring her the food. So I remember uh, in the midnight, she told me, David, I have seen your face where you are taking care of me. Mm. You are not even look guilty or looking like, uh, uh, like I can say the face which with uh, seal. Mm -hmm. Seal. Still like. Um. So you you basically you were you were present. You were full of joy. Yeah. There, yeah. Yes. Not yes. hiding. Like no, not being sad. No. No. Not being sad or being uh -huh. like. I'm I'm tired of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or annoyed, annoyed. Oh, annoyed her. Yeah. Or like, uh, put her aside. Mm -hmm. Like you can die by your own. Yeah, yeah. You see, but I was there trying to make sure she be come back mm -hmm. to a normal health. Mm -hmm. So later on, she began to speak that, and he said, "You know, by doing that today, from the deep." Uh, part of my heart, mm. I'm going to bless you so mm. you will become a national and international minister. Mm. Wow, you see, mm -hmm. so yeah, I received that blessings, mm -hmm. and that's why that now you see me here with Alex. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle, it's yeah. a blessing which I received from my mom. Amen. Yeah, and we'll come to that part also how we met. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think it's incredible to see also that uh, to hear that your mom saw you, yeah. saw a calling on your life, you know, from your birth on. Uh, then, of course, she, she saw greatness. Like she said, okay, um, I see the, there is a hand of God on this kid. Yes. So she wanted you to succeed in life. Um, yeah. And then also in, towards the end of her life, recognizing that she has to let you her desires go, you know, of yeah. what he, she thought you, you're supposed to become. Yes. And then actually bless you and release you to become a minister. Yes, yes, um, yes. And I think that's incredible just that your mom did that because uh, that also, I think, um, did something in you, right? Like yes, uh, starting yes. believing, okay, like, yeah, there is a calling on my life, yes. you know, to become a minister. And you also shared just a little bit about uh, that you went to university yeah. and then you encountered God there. Yeah. Um, I, I know we, we can uh, uh, go forth and back a little bit, yes, but okay. can you share with me just uh, briefly um, about how did you realize, okay, your relationship with God has not been what He desires it to be with you uh, and how did that change? Yeah, of course, after reaching university, uh, I continued with my sinful life, <laughs> you see? Yeah. trying to go to these um, nightclubs, mm -hmm. you see, uh, trying to drink alcohol, yeah. to be a womanizer a little mm -hmm. bit. <laughs> but um, I remember there was one of my friend mm -hmm. whom come from Serengeti to, to the place where I live. Mm -hmm. So, our relationship was very close. Mm -hmm. He's called Andrea. Yeah. Uh, so, that brother of mine, well, we, we started like a business. Mm -hmm. So, after starting that business, uh, we, continued, we continued with our life. Mm. But without knowing that business, can fall apart <laughs> because we try to live our normal life, mm -hmm. no, no spiritual things. There. Mm -hmm. Even though there was witches and the other stuff, mm -hmm. for, but for us, we don't even go to church, we don't even practicing witch doctors. Mm -hmm. So we were there just 
watching mm -hmm. like the business is running. Yeah. But one day we felt like there was things not normal there. Mm. So we tried to ask each other, my brother, we are not going to church. Mm. We are not going to uh, which doctors. Mm -hmm. We are only here without God, without anything. Mm -hmm. Drinking alcohol and my brother, you are a womanizer. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing now? Yeah. We have to decide. To go to church or to the witch doctors. Yeah, we're ending up deciding like you're supposed to follow God because mm -hmm. we see like following witches, it will ending up like a bad mm -hmm. ending. Mm -hmm. But following God is always good because you see the rich which come from God it will last for so long. Mm -hmm. Just it's a long lasting yeah. rich ri riches. Mm -hmm. See? So then we make a decision like, okay, now this is the time to follow God. Mm -hmm. So we started to, there was one fellowship called the Toughest. They mm -hmm. used to invite us like to go to yeah. those meetings and whatever. Mm -hmm. So that day, because of that decision, <laughs> mm -hmm. we, fall up, uh, we fall in following them to the overnight. Mm -hmm. so, so, so again, Overnight is a like a service, like a through the night, like yeah, a church yeah. service through the night. Yeah, mm -hmm. we used to call them praise and worship overnight mm -hmm. because it's a, it's like a, a, a the whole night service mm -hmm. where people come together to praise God and to do some ministration mm -hmm. about preachings, about teachings, mm -hmm. and so many stuffs. Yeah, yeah, but it will last for the whole night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so after that we went back home. Mm -hmm. feeling this peace within <laughs> us and trying to see, okay, this is the right direction mm -hmm. which we can follow. So after that, we start to go to mm -hmm. the fellowship. Yeah. Yeah. And in that fellowship, you also encounter God in a, like in a deeper way. And uh, how, how was, because you, you, sh you told me that you kind of believed in God, but you lived a divided uh, life where you continue to live in a sinful behavior um, and then you said that um, going to that overnight uh, you felt peace mm. so was there a moment for you where you said okay God I want to surrender my life yes. and follow you yeah 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 so after I went into the fellowship I tried to join the uh, praise and worship mm -hmm. team so after some moment, we went to another overnight. Mm -hmm. There was one preacher called the Doctor uh, Pastor Doctor Roman Kone. Mm -hmm. So that pastor, after preaching a lot concerning mm -hmm. Jesus and how we can surrender our life yeah. to Christ, then he called he, he, he called people to give their life to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Then among them. I am the one <laughs> who went in front to surrender mm. to the Lord yeah. as the Lord and, and my Savior, mm -hmm. you see. So it was a nice journey. Mm -hmm. uh, then I would go there and mm. lift my hands on her and tell God, I'm here, Jesus. Yeah. I'm yours, mm. you see. Yeah. yeah. So that was uh, the moment where... You said, okay, I'm going to follow God. Uh, you surrendered um, and then you left your old life behind. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Because after that moment, I, I, I was already make the decision. Mm -hmm. Even before I received that call, mm -hmm. I've already made the, the, the decision that now is the time for me mm. to part ways with my old nature yeah. and to become a new believer. Yeah. Yeah. A new For creation. A new creation. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I, I and I know that, um, just share hearing your story, mm -hmm. and then also it's also my story. You know, yeah. that we had like different uh, encounters with God. Like you know, because salvation many times is not like. Uh, people hear it for the first time and then they're fully yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. following God. Yes. Uh, for most people, it's, yeah, they hear it once, they hear it twice. Yes, you yes. Know. It's like a process. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they come to a place where they recognize God 
and when they're ready to surrender their lives and, and follow him fully. Yes. And I think, especially as ministers, we see that many times, right? Like, Actually, when you <laughs> go, go somewhere, you preach the gospel, you feel like now people are going to change, <laughs> and right now you go there and find the people drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and they I, speak to like such a language, I know what, my brother, <laughs> I'm here. who is Christ? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just sometimes if you, if you think that things happen like, you know, instantly, Yeah. You know, it can be very discouraging uh, in, in ministry. In, yes. in, in general, I think when you share with people uh, the gospel, mm. uh, and I think just knowing, hey, we, we need to have um, patience with people. Yes. And we, yes. we have yes. to also know that God is working in people. Yes. You know, just, and not always as, as the things that we see, you know, like um, that's why also, you know, I, I love, this podcast because we get to share, you know, the journeys of people. Yes. You know, and that normally maybe people will not never hear. Actually, actually. Uh, but knowing that there is a there is a pr process that you know that kind of leads people to the place of surrender. Yeah, actually. And uh, and 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 then and, and, and belief. Yeah. So uh, I I love um, you know that eventually that moment came for you where yeah. you said, okay, God, now I fully surrender myself to you. Yeah. I'm gonna serve you. And I, I know that you uh, stayed with that group, yes. uh, with that fellowship yes. uh, during your time at the university. Yes. And uh, you guys uh, did a lot of uh, different ministry, but also uh, there's a mission strip. <laughs> so that <laughs> yeah, you, you, you did. Uh, share with me about this particular mission strip with this uh, older woman also uh, later praying for you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, of course, uh, I remember one day there was this group called the Kusika Kusikofikiwa uh, Nigeria. Mm. It's rich and rich people with the gospel. So, uh, and also they have another name called Jesus Glory. Mm -hmm. You see? So, they wanted to get like people from different universities to join their, from, from these fellowships. Mm -hmm. So they can join their movement for only one week, mm -hmm. like a trip of one week. So when we can go there and preach the gospel and see the manifestation of God and the people get delivered and mm -hmm. whatever and whatever. So that's where I was the only student mm -hmm. who come from our university mm -hmm. to join them. Mm -hmm. But before that, I have some issues with my mom that. Mm -hmm. I called her and told her, like, Mom, now I want to go to the missions and the, mm -hmm. to preach the gospel. And she refused this. Like, no, you, you don't need to be there mm -hmm. because uh, you don't have money. You don't yeah. have, like, a, a lot of stuff concerning money. Mm -hmm. But I told her, like, no, Mom, this is God's work. It's not mm -hmm. our work. Mm -hmm. if he wants us to be there, so I'll be there. Mm -hmm. See? So after that conversations later on i pushed to go to the mission mm. so that was my first time experience on the mission field mm. yeah so while we were there i was a uh, immature christian a very fresh christian <laughs> so even how to cast out demons i was never even have that mindset how mm. can, how can i do it yeah and uh, because I have, I have like this thinking, this was supposed to be done like by pastors and mm -hmm, those mm -hmm. people are, who are already been special there, anointed uh, special people. anointed people. <laughs> but I was not feeling like I was able to do that. Mm -hmm. See, but I remember one day because of my maturity, there was one guy whom we went with him in that mission field. Mm -hmm. So there was like. We, we prayed for one witchcraft mm. uh, woman, and later on, he, 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 he gives out his rituals mm -hmm. that people may, uh, so people may, later they can use as a testimony that we've mm -hmm. catch these things from the witch. Mm -hmm. So other, people, other witches, they can even surrender their mm. rituals. Mm -hmm. So, charms, I can say charms. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, the charms. So, after that, we, uh, I tried to talk to my brother there and try to find out how we can keep those stuffs. So my brother tried to 
to tell me to tell me leave this you know what you can have these things uh, so you can keep them mm -hmm. then because of my maturity and the very fresh christian mm -hmm. i told that guy you know what these things uh, they trusted you to, to keep them <laughs> so you can keep them because i don't think if i was supposed to keep those things <laughs> but i was trying to ha to to escape because mm -hmm. of my maturity mm -hmm. knowing that those things they have power mm -hmm. but later on i came to realize like it's like a box you can paint a box with uh, very bad pictures mm -hmm. like people with horns and mm -hmm. whatever and whatever but deep inside the box is empty mm. it's like saturn yeah yeah you may see like those charms and it's mm. thinking like they have power to do this and this mm -hmm. but they don't have power in yeah. them because yeah. we have uh, 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 the one who is greatest live inside of us Amen. so the, it's greater more than those charms and mm. witchcraft so later on after one week while we were in that week of mission I remember the last day of the mission, mm -hmm. uh, I was there and he, at that day, very early in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, it was Sunday, mm -hmm. so around 6 a.m., mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was just, we used to have like a prayer time mm -hmm. in, those, in that time, mm -hmm. particular time that we used to go and pray yeah. to the Lord and mm -hmm. see. So after that morning, I went into, uh, into prayers, but I started to sing mm -hmm. to the Lord. Then uh, I felt like the tangible presence of God surrounded me, mm -hmm. you see. So I tried to worship God and pray mm -hmm. uh, and pray and the, uh, and sing this song mm -hmm. like hallelujah mm -hmm. amen hallelujah hallelujah amen and pako kitini pako mfalme mimesi mama kukua budu mfalme nikisema hallelujah so while I was praying that song, I was singing that song, uh, which means, before you, Lord, before your throne, Lord, I stand before you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was here to worship you, to bow down before you. Mm -hmm. You see, I st I, I'm here yeah. to worship you. Mm -hmm. I stand before your throne to worship you. So I felt like I was in a very deep moment of worship. Mm. And suddenly, there was a woman who used to be like a supervisor yeah. uh, in that mission trip. She's an old, older woman. She came to me and touched my head, and uh, suddenly she started to pray for me for the anointing, mm. like ministerial anointing. Mm. Just, God, I pray for this uh, kid so he can stand before people, he can preach mm. the a pure gospel without mixing it with anything Amen. and the, uh, that you can have a boldness to reach out people. Mm -hmm. So after that prayer, there were some people who surrounded there. They were watching mm -hmm. such a uh, moment mm -hmm. and some of them after those prayers, they came to me and they asked me, oh, we wish we have, uh, we have, we have such kind of prayers from that mm -hmm. man. Wow. See, it was deep prayers wow. and the anointing prayers. Yeah. And those two people were talking that were pastors mm, okay. whom we invited them for the mission mm. from, oh, wow. the, from that area mm. called the Mangaka Mtwara. Mm. It's a region, one, one region here in Tanzania. Mm. Yeah. So uh, it's a beautiful picture of you kind of stepping out of your comfort zone, you know, going on a mission trip and knowing, okay, I'm, I'm doing the work of God and God's finding you there. Yes. <laughs> and actually anointing you mm. uh, for ministry. Yes, yes. Uh, so that's such a beautiful picture that, you know, God has taken you 
uh, to your place of destiny, <laughs> right? Actually, actually. <laughs> because today we are ministering as missionaries, actually. and uh, we're going to share also the story of how we met. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I think it's so beautiful that God knew exactly, you know, where to take you, and then, uh, and then also, uh, not just yourself feeling a calling of God on your life, but also God using others to confirm it on your life, right? Yes, like yes. you know, like your mom. Yes. You know, and then other ministers. Yes. Uh, I know that you didn't share that with us today, but there were also some very known uh, ministers here in Tanzania yes. who spoke over you uh, yes. certain um, uh, there destination. Was, there was uh, one singer called mm -hmm. Dr. Ipiana Kibona. Mm -hmm. One day I was walking to a uh, uh, fellowship room, mm -hmm. uh, place where we used to worship around the university there. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly they called me you. Apostle, <laughs> <laughs> and there was one friend of mine whom I shared with him the story mm -hmm. why um, um, my Lord called me as an apostle mm -hmm. to go into different places to preach the gospel. Yeah. So he just said, "You are an apostle. You are, you are kidding, my brother." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Dr. Piano was there with mm -hmm. this friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly he has that call from mm -hmm. Dr. Piano. He is a very respected. Uh, worship singer here mm -hmm. in Tanzania, mm -hmm. Dr. Ipiana. Mm -hmm. If you want to hear his songs, you can go on YouTube and <laughs> you watch, will find you know, you'll find him, Dr. Yeah. Ipiana Kibona. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. after that, my fr since that time, that friend of mine has called me a pastor. <laughs> <David>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because and, uh, it's not about us, yeah, it's not yeah. about the name, it's just for, it's, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a, I can say, it's a calling. Yeah, yeah. yes. And I know we have probably different people watch this and they say like, okay, what do you mean by that? And um, so I think it's just in, in uh, um, you know, uh, in, in the Bible we see, you know, there's like uh, in Ephesians. Yes, where, um, for heaven. Yeah, where, where, where the, the fivefold ministry, they, yes. they talk about it and that there's different gifts that Jesus has given to his church. Yes. Um, and then, uh, of course, you felt like um, there was a calling for you for an apostolic ministry. Yes which is a ministry of uh, um, pioneering, you know, and e e equipping the church yes. um, and expanding the kingdom of God, and yes. especially in uh, areas where uh, it's still not there. Yes. Uh, yeah, a lot of missionary work is an apostolic work. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, yeah, and I, I love it, you know, that God can uh, really... Uh, use people yes. to uh, affirm, you know, the calling on your life. And, of course, it's not about walking around and telling people, you know, this is who I am and, you know, uh, now yeah, yeah, respect no. me as such. No. No, I think it's just about being confident. Okay, I'm called by God, yes. you know, and then um, he has a purpose for my life. And it's not just an idea in my head, you know, yeah. but it's actually also other people see that uh, on my life. Yes, and, yes. Um, and I think it's not always necessary, I think, you know, that people confirm, you know, there will be also people that will uh, not confirm you, you know, yeah. like, or will even discourage you yeah. to pursue the calling of, of God. Yes. But I think it's it's also important that there will uh, will be especially mature people, you know, and uh, and uh, fathers, I would say, in, 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 uh, in, in faith yes. um, that uh, see it and, and can also, um, you know, uh, continue to... Comp uh, uh, encourage you to, you know, to in that direction. To pursue that direction. Pursuing that direction, yes. yes. Um, so, I know uh, you, so this moment, um, you, uh, you, 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 your mom, so you had this moment with this lady who prayed over you. Yeah. Then later, uh, you already shared that your mom, uh, she uh, became uh, sick and then passed away. Yes. She blessed you before she passed away. Yeah. And then in that moment, I, uh, I know that you felt, okay, there's a calling on my life yeah. and uh, I no longer need to pursue <laughs> school. <laughs> school yeah. So uh, you felt like, okay, I, I just don't want to stop. Yeah. Um, and then you inherited also a house from your mom, so you yes. needed to take care of those places. Yes. Um, so you moved back uh, to Serengeti. Yes, to yes. Your home. from Dar es Salaam, yeah. yeah. So uh, at that moment, like, what was it for you uh, feeling okay there's a, a calling on my life uh, how did you start like what did you do <laughs> after the death of my mom mm -hmm. I felt like uh, I have no support to go back to the university mm -hmm. like I felt like okay 
here in Tanzania, people say have a lot of things to do with mm. their families. Mm -hmm. Then later on, I become I will become a burden to mm. someone's family. So I say like, no, I don't want to look like that, like mm -hmm. being a beggar. Yeah. Every time if I want food, you know, my mm. uncle or auntie, mm -hmm. I need food. Mm. You no, know, the renting are finished. Yeah, oh, I need to rent the house and whatever. So I felt like, okay, this is time for me to move on. Mm -hmm. I accepted like, now my mom, she's gone. Mm. So I accept the change. Mm -hmm. For me, I usually accept a new challenge. Yeah. Yeah, because always are there. Mm -hmm. To make you not to to de to to depress you or to put you down, mm -hmm. but it's a moment where God is trying to take you to another yeah. uh, level or to another destination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, after that, I went back in Serengeti. I, I was there in Serengeti, mm -hmm. so I tried to join in my my church there. Mm -hmm. They used to call me only Minister David, mm -hmm. <laughs> Minister. Mm -hmm. And even some of my close friends, they would say like, we have never heard that name in our church. Mm -hmm. Someone called the Minister, mm -hmm. and he doesn't have any position <laughs> in the church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was not easy it's by God's grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there was my church, uh, church uh, youth chairperson. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's called Martin Chaz. He's now a pastor mm -hmm. uh, uh, with a small uh, planted church there in Serengeti. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he sees potential in me mm -hmm. also. He said, like, ah, this guy has a lot of things which, we, if we can try to use them, mm -hmm. it can bring some fruits in yeah. our church. Mm -hmm. So we try to sit down and create a room for us to bring out our ideas and mm -hmm. what we can do together as youth mm -hmm. ministry in our church. Yeah. So we come with an idea of having some crusades there in San mm -hmm. and the, doing like these English services where mm -hmm. someone can preach and another one can translate mm -hmm. and there was a translator. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it's, it seems like God has me being used in me to it's, uh, he has been prepared me for such a moment like this. Mm -hmm. You see, yeah, yeah. like now I'm a translator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So even if you guys who are watching when you are going to be here in Tanzania, <laughs> you will find me and I will translate for you. Yeah, you're a really good translator, like interpreter. Yeah, yeah. interpreter. Yes. See. So we preach a mega crusade there in Serengeti mm -hmm. and I remember even one place now is there was a market and we had the last people to preach the gospel there mm -hmm. <laughs> a, very, a, a mega crusade mm -hmm. yeah so most of the people it was a, a new thing in our church to yeah. see like a part a, a, a small part of group in the church come out with an idea of preaching mm -hmm. the gospel because usually the church waits for people from maybe abroad or mm. from different places to bring the crusade where they can join power and yeah. preach the gospel. Mm. But for us, it was quite a different thing. Mm. We try to raise funds from different people. Yeah. Uh, we come up with some ideas which I used to have in our fellowship. I introduced there and try to mm. find a way to get money to, for that mm -hmm. crusade. Crusades, you see. So we did two crusades then, mm. Serengeti. And I was the preacher in those <laughs> crusades. <laughs> yeah. You can watch some of my videos. Go and search David Derrick uh, in YouTube. Mm -hmm. There was some of my... Okay, so there's some uh, evidence, evidence of your work. <laughs> yeah, of me <laughs> preaching the gospel. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. So, and then you start getting involved in church. And then uh, have you continued then um, taking on more ministry? Or what happened after that? Yeah, after that I remember because my mom, she used to be a government official, mm -hmm. so I inherited some of the money from the money which she used to put in these social security funds. Mm -hmm. So you inherited uh, uh, money from your mother? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. So they gave me uh, it's a huge amount of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was driven again with money. Mm -hmm. So I tried to make sure that I increase. Mm -hmm. That money, so I started the business. Mm -hmm. See, I first I take some maize to uh, to 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 um, Arusha. Mm -hmm. the, the business failed. Mm -hmm. Then I 
turn back to, into Serengeti and open another yeah. business. Mm -hmm. And uh, that business doesn't work out. It was mm -hmm. around 2020. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it when it reaches it reaches around uh, 2021, mm -hmm. I felt like now I need to shift from yeah. Serengeti to Mwanza, mm -hmm. where we are here right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, it's about five hours away from where you live, and then you moved here to pursue business. Is that correct? Yes, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I came from Serengeti to here just to find life, uh -huh. not for any other thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I felt like now I need to shift. Mm -hmm. So I think because this is big town, yeah, yeah. it's a big city. Mm -hmm. I think it's the second uh, big city apart from Dar es Salaam. Yeah. So I say like, okay, now I need to go there because. I get a, a good circulation of money mm -hmm. because people, there are a lot of cars, yeah, there are yeah. a lot of people because I used to do car wash business. Mm. So I said, like, because towns, there's a lot of cars, maybe mm -hmm. I can boom there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you came to Mwanza with the idea of um, earning money. Yeah. Uh, like people say in Tanzania, finding life. <laughs> yeah, finding life. Um, yeah. But also, um, you know, you had this calling for ministry. Mm. So what did it look like for you moving to Mwanza? And then uh, did you do any ministry here? Um, so what did it look like for you? So after, your after I came here in Mwanza, uh, there is one of my friends used to talk about one church called the HHC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to, uh, to speak good about the bishop of that church. Mm -hmm. So I remember... There was a crusade here uh, in Mwanza, around somewhere called in Kuyuni. Mm -hmm. So I went there just to to increase the power in that crusade, to pray for people mm -hmm. and help out. help out because mm -hmm. I know I have this calling. Mm -hmm. So uh, I went there, do some small ministry there and mm -hmm. say like, okay, now I think this church is good because I saw them doing this kind of things. I think we can... I can be there, mm -hmm. so I can continue to serve the Lord there. Yeah. So, uh, I, I continue to do business. I, I was in the middle of thinking, mm -hmm. like I have this calling, and now I need to find a life. Mm -hmm. You see? So, and I felt like in my heart, I supposed to go in the villages to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. And right away, I think about uh, growing my businesses mm -hmm. here in Mwanza because I used to have two businesses mm -hmm. like a, a milk mm -hmm. business and also a uh, cow wash business. Mm -hmm. So I tried hard to make sure these things here work out and mm -hmm. bring much money to me yeah, yeah. so I can have a good life here in Mwanza mm -hmm. building houses <laughs> and having yeah. cars and whatever <laughs> so I can go back home and so show them that you see mm -hmm. my 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 plans work <laughs> work very good, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. later on I found like it was not like that. Mm. So, mm -hmm. uh, and the, I was trying to encourage myself during those church services in Sunday. I went there and trying to pray for people to receive mm. healing to cast mm. out demons. And yeah. I come back home saying, "Oh, today I've done such." <laughs> A good ministry. So I encourage myself, like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm a minister of God. Yeah. You so saw today I've cast out two demons. Mm -hmm. But deep inside, I felt like that is not enough. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be full, committed to God, like to save Him mm -hmm. without compromising. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I uh, know that in that time, yes. Uh, so you, you had those two businesses and then. Um, of course, internally, you have all these uh, mm. things that you're battling with. Uh, and then uh, I was in Tanzania by that time. Okay. Um, I, I moved to Tanzania in 2021. Yeah. Um, and I started uh, coming to Mwanza. Yes. Um, and with the idea of actually moving here yeah. uh, to continue doing ministry. And I had uh, two of my friends, Andre and Yana, if you're watching this <laughs> um, or listening to this. Um, yeah. So I, Andre and Yana came to visit Tanzania because there was a, a crusade organized by an American minister in your hometown. Yes. And uh, they went uh, to help out in that, uh, at that crusade. Yeah. 
and I know that uh, during that time they also met you. Yes. So how did you end up uh, be going from Mwanza uh, back to your hometown? So why wh why were you there? Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's a very good question, and uh, you've made me to remember <laughs> why it happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I remember I heard like there is a crusade in our hometown. Mm -hmm. It was around the. Uh, 2022, the January of mm -hmm. 2022. So I said like, okay, I felt in my spirit I supposed to go there mm -hmm. without any invitation, without any, uh, like people call me just, Dave, you can come to this mm -hmm. crusade, you see? Yeah. So I remember the first day of the crusade, early in the morning I wake up and pick my stuff, mm -hmm. and my backpack and the went to Serengeti <laughs> without knowing the motive behind yeah. for me to go there. Mm. But I felt like I need to go there. Yeah. You see? So after that, I went there. People received me with joy and they said, oh, the minister of God is here. <laughs> so everything is good now. <laughs> because most of the people from Serengeti, they know us because of the, those crusades yeah. which we preach mm -hmm. before. So they feel like there is power which is going to be uh, increased there. Mm. So while I was there, uh, I continued to do ministry because I know how to do it. Mm -hmm. I, without even waiting for people to push me, yeah. that you have to go and mm -hmm. pray for people or do, or do this and this, mm -hmm. because I know how to do it. Yeah. Because I was uh, prepared for such a moment mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that. So I know where, when I am in the crusade, what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. So uh, I started to pray for people there. Mm. And I remember uh, one of the supervisors of that crusade called Venya. Mm -hmm. I think you yeah, know Venya. Yeah, it's also a friend of mine, yeah. Yes, he's your friend. I remember mm -hmm. last year we met him in Dar es Salaam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So Venya called me and told me, and told me Leslie, I have, I have a gift for you. Mm. Then I, I don't know why. And he told me, uh, because uh, in those crusades, they used to end up around 6 uh, in the evening. Mm -hmm. So for me, I usually stayed there and they tried to continue to pray for people and mm -hmm. translating for those white people, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. those ministers of God. Mm -hmm. Then I stayed there because those who have the badge of translators mm -hmm. they are no longer there. Mm -hmm. So I'm the only one who <laughs> supposed to go and translate for them because mm -hmm. I used to know how to do it. Yeah. So I was there translating when they pray for those sick people. Mm -hmm. What they felt, I was supposed to tell them that mm -hmm. these people that now is feeling this and this. Mm -hmm. So through that, it seems like God is was using that as a uh, to open the door for me to have a good communication with mm -hmm. those people. Yeah, and uh, I remember uh, at the end of that crusade, mm -hmm. it was another Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so I have encounters on Sundays. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the supervisor of that crusade, mm. uh, he says, you know, now we need to take these people to different churches, mm -hmm. so they need the translators. Mm -hmm. So David, I think you need to be among the translators. Mm -hmm. And I said, why not? <laughs> I'll be there. Yeah. And the, I was not there because of the, mm -hmm. like, to find anything. Like, yeah, I just like, wanted to serve. I just wanted to serve the yeah. Lord. And mm -hmm. it, even I used my bus fare without mm -hmm. asking anyone to pay for my bus fare. Mm -hmm. I went there just to serve yeah. the Lord. So I was not having any kind of motive behind mm -hmm. me going there. It's just the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. who wanted me to be there. So... I remember uh, Brother Venya gave me uh, Brother Andre Gorachev. Mm -hmm. So we went to the one, to one church. It, mm -hmm. it was a TAG church. So I started to translate for him. And after the service, when we turned back to the base mm -hmm. where we used to be, uh, where they used to be, so we have uh, like a little conversations. And I introduced myself to him, like my name is David, mm -hmm. and I am now living in Mwanza. I have come here only for this crusade. And mm -hmm. So, here is my own place, but 
Yeah. I'm not here for. I'm 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 here just to save God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he said like, okay, wow, you are living in Mwanza. Mm -hmm. he, he was very excited <laughs> and very happy. Mm -hmm. I said yes. He says, okay, so I have a friend of mine who wants to come and open the ministry there. Mm -hmm. So I was not have this idea of mission, mm -hmm. missionary work and whatever. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about the open, maybe that's the friend of him is coming to open mm -hmm. the church. Mm -hmm. So I was ready even to join mm -hmm. the church. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready even to left my church behind to okay. come and join this wow. friend because he, uh, I, 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 I was thought like... He, he need help to mm -hmm. start the church, mm -hmm. you see. So uh, after that, we exchanged our numbers, mm -hmm. and the, I, 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 later on, I, I came back Mwanza and mm -hmm. continued with my life. But he says I want to uh, to connect con to connect you with my brother mm -hmm. Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I remember also when um, Andre told me, like, hey, Alex, I met this guy, and I think um, he, uh, he has a lot of potential to do ministry, and I think he's the right guy for you, so especially because you're starting now your ministry, and you need people. <laughs> I remember you told me, like, hey, reach out to this, to this, um, to this guy named David, and in that time, I, because I had so many things also in my head, you know, yeah. I just, um, I just, I still lived in Zanzibar, mm. and then I only came uh, for a short trip to yeah. uh, Mwanza, yeah. and, and, and I thought to myself, okay, uh, I just need to find out what ministry is going to look like. Yeah. I cannot get too involved, you know, with different people and, you know, their expectations. Yeah. And, but I do uh, remember I reached out to you. Yes. We, and then I told you, hey, David, uh, come and join me, you know, for a week. Yes. I believe I said like let's let's just do some ministry together. Yeah. And uh, we met uh, at the mall yeah, here yeah, in yeah, Rockstar Mall. <laughs> Rock City mall. <laughs> yeah. uh, I remember seeing you like this tall guy. Yeah. Like, Taller than yeah. everyone else. Uh, but yeah, I and I, I remember we went to uh, we did ministry. I think for one week was that. Well, uh, it one, was on one week. Yeah, we did ministry for one week only. Yeah. And uh, and then I told you like, hey, I'm I'm leaving, and then. And I will stay in touch. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, so, and then I left, and I think uh, about six months. Eight. Passed. Eight months. Yes, <laughs> because we went there around August. Mm -hmm. So you came in Tanzania last year, April. Yeah, so eight months. Yeah. Yeah. And there was not much communication. I, I remember you reach, tried to reach out to me a few times, but yeah. then uh, I was kind of too busy in my mind with other things. And I didn't think it was too important, <laughs> to yeah, be honest. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so in that time, uh, while I was away, um, so what happened? Like, um, we had this one week of ministry together. Yes. And then uh, I told you I will come back, you know, we stay in touch. But then eight months, yeah. you don't hear anything from me. <laughs> yes. So what happened in those eight months? Yeah, in those eight months, yeah. I felt like I can uh, to continue with my businesses. Mm -hmm. When the uh, I felt like still there is something in my heart to mm -hmm. serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. So after those eight months, uh, I, uh, I I I I count a lot of ch of challenges mm -hmm. with my businesses. Mm -hmm. I remember a lot of most uh, both of them. Mm. They collapsed. Okay, wow. Yeah, so I, uh, my, my, my uncle told me, like, David, now I want to send in Serengeti. There is some work there to do. Mm -hmm. Not just to, for earning money, mm -hmm. just to help him. <laughs> <laughs> so I went in Serengeti and helped him with some small, small stuff there. And uh, after that, I remember uh, it was around April. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because April is my birthday month, mm. so I usually have like moment of prayers, mm. fasting and prayers. Mm -hmm. So I fasted for three days without taking anything, mm. just praying for three things. I prayed like to get a new business or to God can sh uh, open the doors for my economy, and also I prayed like to get to, into ministry. 
if God knows like this is the right time for me to enter into ministry, mm -hmm. so he can show me mm -hmm. that if it's the right time, then I can enter into ministry. Mm -hmm. Then the third thing I prayed to get a wife. <laughs> <laughs> so mm -hmm. I pray for three things. Mm -hmm. You see? But after that prayers in the one brother of mine, mm -hmm. Andrea, mm -hmm. again he wanted me to partner with him in the business. Mm -hmm. You see? And suddenly, while I was still waiting for the business to start, also I hear a call. Mm -hmm. Said, "Okay." At first, I picked the phone and said, mm, "What? What kind of language is this?" Because we are not used to hear someone calls and speak English right away. Uh -huh. yeah, so I felt like, "Okay." Hmm. Then the phone, the phone cuts, mm -hmm. and later on calls again and said, okay, now it's me, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So where are you right now? I need to uh, have a moment together. So can you... Uh, then I said, I'm in Serengeti right now. So mm -hmm. uh, can you be able to come to Mwanza so we can have a small conversation mm -hmm. and how we can do ministry yeah, or whatever? Yeah. Then I said, okay, next Monday I'll be there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because and, uh, we had like a funeral there in Serengeti, uh -huh. which we were supposed to finish yeah. with our staffs. And, uh, and I think in the meantime, so I, I was uh, thinking, so in the, in the meantime, I moved to Mwanza. Mm. So um, in 2022, in August, I moved to Mwanza and then I left for four months right away. Yeah. Like a few months later, I left for, uh, went back home and then to America. So I was traveling. Yeah. And I, I remember also, as I was praying for the ministry in Tanzania, I remember I was just always, um, you, your name comes up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like praying, say, God, like lead me, you know, just show me what to do next and, you know, how to uh, move forward. And uh, you, your name comes up, you know, in my, in my yeah. prayers. So I was like, oh, David, like, what about this guy, you know? Like, we yeah. spent only one week, you know, yeah. together. <laughs> so why am I still reminding of him? Yeah. And... And, I, and, I, and then I arrived to, back to Tanzania, uh, or I was on my way, and then I said, okay, I need to call this guy, you know, mm. just, <laughs> and meet him, and then yeah. see what happens. Yeah. And uh, so that was the moment, you know, where you were in Serengeti, yeah. I, uh, I call you and tell you, hey, David, I'm coming to Mwanza, <laughs> yes. and uh, I want to have lunch with you, yes. uh, and I want to just kind of talk with you about uh, some ideas for ministry. Yeah. And... And I remember you told me that in that time, yeah, your, your, your friend, he had a business opportunity for yes, you. Yes, yes. Uh, and he promised you that you're going to earn a lot of money in that, yes. in that time. Yes. Uh, so, and then I call you and you have like this... 50-50 uh, chance. Yeah, yeah. And I think also for you, you didn't know exactly what I was offering you. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah, nah. yeah. So, but you felt like, okay, this is an opportunity. I remember my grandma told me, David, you are the minister of God. Mm. So don't think now about business. Mm -hmm. You have to think about how you can save the Lord. Mm. God is going to bless you. Yeah. So, and the, when I was trying to make the decision, <laughs> I say like, okay, now I'll go to check uh, for my brother, Alexi. Mm -hmm. Then after those short breaks, I will come back to continue with the business. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. Yeah. So uh, you had basically another plan already. Yes. This didn't work, didn't work out. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. And I think, um, but I think also for you it was a step of faith, right? Because I remember you told me that you had um, you, the equipment for car wash, right? Yeah, yeah. So where you said like, okay, you, you, you sold it. Yeah, because for me to come. For yeah. you to buy the fare, you yeah. know? Yeah, because I didn't offer you yes, anything. Yes. So I just asked you to come and visit yeah, and yeah, see yeah. me. So I saw it was a low price yeah. just to get the money to come yeah. in Mwanza. So and I think that was a step of faith on your yeah. side, saying, yeah. okay, God, I don't know exactly what's waiting for me there, yeah. but I, I, I think it's you. So I'm going to step out. Yes. Um, and then we met. <laughs> uh, I told you that I'm looking for someone who is uh, who, who's going to join me in, in traveling with me yeah. and help me with uh, also interpreting. Yeah. Uh, because my Swahili is still, unfortunately, is not uh, very good. <laughs> yes. But, uh, yeah, you, you told me, like, uh, and, and I remember I told you, hey, David, 
I, I don't have much to give to you. Yes. So I said, like, I, you know, I will cover your expenses, you know, when you travel together. Yeah. And then I just give you some little money uh, for other expenses that yeah. will come up uh, for you personally. And, and I ask you if you will be able to commit for six months yeah. uh, to, co to come and uh, surf with me. And after those six months, we'll decide mm. if we want to continue to do this uh, ministry, together. Yeah, yes. ministry. Uh, and you told me right away, uh, hey, Alex, I feel this is God, you know, you know and I want to join you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And here we are. Yeah, and here, here we are. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it was last year, April, and we are now uh, approaching April this year. So yes. it's almost one, one year, year. Yes. Uh, that we are together uh, serving God. And it's been a, an amazing journey That's since right. then. That's right. uh, we've uh, traveled all over Tanzania. Yes and uh, ministered in so many places together yeah. and we've seen god touch people yeah was, yeah people being saved uh, yes. delivered healed uh, especially now uh, among the islands in lake victoria yeah Ukerewe. in ukurewa yes and um and uh you you told me so you told me that before i called you uh, you had this prayer you said god yeah. okay you know, I need I need finances. You know, like yeah. okay, you ask God for another business because that was the idea. Yeah. Uh, then you said, okay, I, I want to serve you, yes. <laughs> and then I wanna I wanna get married. Yeah. So okay, now we had this conversation with you. You said, okay, Alex, I join you. Yeah. And we went together to to Ukurewe. Yes. Uh, the, one of the islands yes. in Lake Victoria to minister. So uh, when we arrived there, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Very good question because <laughs> now I'm leaving him. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, when I made the, the decision to go into ministry with my brother Alexi, I remember because I've already been praying to God that I'm supposed to get three things mm -hmm. money, or b uh, four, I think. M money comes with business and mm -hmm. whatever. So, uh, <laughs> Ministry that's always like commit com commission. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. have to commit yourself without to know what is next. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I pray also to get the wife. Mm -hmm. So in my spirit, I felt like God has already answered all these prayers because mm -hmm. the Bible says when we stand before uh, to God as we pray to Him, He's already answered our prayers. Mm -hmm. So we have to believe that. So mm. I felt in my spirit that God has already answered my prayers mm. because of such kind of op opportunities which comes along the side of mm. those prayers. So uh, uh, I remember when the first year I arrived in uh, Okerewe, Nansio, uh, we went in one church called the FPST just to greet our friend there. She's called Pastor Veronica. Mm. And the and that was on a Sunday? No, it the was just uh, like uh, there was a seminar oh, going yeah. on, mm -hmm. the, like a women's seminar. Mm -hmm. So when we arrived there, then suddenly I saw like a lady passing there and said, oh, my God, <laughs> what is she doing here? <laughs> <laughs> this beautiful lady. <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. Then I felt like, mm, okay. Even when I tried to look aside and not looking at her, I was ending up like searching where is, where is she? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember we, when they first invited us, they put us outside the church to mm -hmm. chill a little bit. Mm -hmm. But later on, we entered inside the church and start to have this time of service and mm -hmm. worship and the praising. So I mm -hmm. saw her in front praising God and mm -hmm. I said, oh my God, what is this? I'm feeling different <laughs> like now. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I feel like this is someone whom I can pursue. Yeah. Yeah. It was the first day. Yeah, the, the first time, yeah, first day on the club. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I felt like, okay. Sorry. Then. Mm -hmm. Now? You, Po? Yes, you say. Ah, no, I not feed you because I Ah, okay, we're the visitor here. So, then we went after 
service we have uh, greetings and whatever and they say like okay let me pretend like i encounter nothing mm -hmm. then i went back home then i remember uh uh in saturday one mm -hmm. saturday i felt like okay tomorrow i'm going to talk to her pastor mm -hmm. so <laughs> i can share what i have mm -hmm. in my heart so i don't want to look like i'm a womanizer or yeah. trying to uh to bring uh, an idea which is not good yeah because you just arrived you yeah, know, just you just suddenly. met her and then yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. so uh after that day i felt like that saturday i felt like my my heart was thinking a lot i i felt like my heart there's a lot of things going on mm -hmm. in my heart that this lady she doesn't give me sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so I felt like tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, I'm, uh, whatever people are going to perceive me, mm -hmm. I'm going to finish this. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, I, I remember it was Sunday when we go to the same church. Mm -hmm. And the, it was like in the middle of the service. Uh, they invited the choir to come to sing, mm -hmm. to praise God there. Then I felt like, in my spirit, I felt like that one, she is your wife. Mm. Then I said, oh, sure? And yes. Then suddenly I felt like a pain in my heart, like, mm. what if mm. I'm going to miss her? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I felt like, mm. When I'm going to wait until the service is over, and I was not comfortable about that, <laughs> then suddenly, I, because pastor, she was sitting next to me, mm -hmm. and the, I told her, like, no, pastor, I saw this lady in your home there. Mm -hmm. She was your daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, and she says, no. Mm -hmm. You see that person next to her, She's her mother. Mm -hmm. and I asked her, okay, so which tribe is, is she from? Because there is different kind of tribes here in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. There is Kerewe. Yeah. And because we were, we were in Kerewe, mm -hmm. I thought she's a Kerewe. Mm -hmm. And the pastor told me, told me, like, no, she's from Kigoma, mm -hmm. one region called Kigoma. So she's, she's coming from one tribe called Iwaha. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I felt peace even more. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I told I told that pastor, pastor, uh, I'm a young man and I'm not yet married, so I see like this is something which I need to, uh, to go yeah, on, to pursue. To pursue you, yes, yeah. she said like, oh, you have speak this on the altar, then I need to think even more. I think <laughs> this is from God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. I remember. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you met. Uh, her name is Grace. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Her name is Grace, and yeah. so you. And then you remember also. Uh, I was with you all the time, yes. and then I remember just uh, in that uh, service. You know, I saw her kind of looking in your direction and kind of feeling shy. You know. Yeah, like, yeah. And then I saw you, so I felt like okay, something is going on. Yes. And then we talked about this uh, yes. afterwards, and said, "Hey, Alex, I know." It's very sudden, and you know, I don't know her, but I feel like there's uh, there's something I feel uh, towards her. Yeah. And then we start the process of you. Yeah. Um, talking to the pastor, and then also starting pursuing grace. Yeah. So I want to share this testimony uh -huh. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I remember that Sunday mm -hmm. uh, after the church service, mm -hmm. uh, as we are heading back to our car. Mm -hmm. I saw the lady come running toward us. Mm -hmm. Then she come and take my backpack. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, oh, this is a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And when we approached the car, mm -hmm. and we were, we were in, inside the car, uh, she was sitting next to me. Mm -hmm. And all the 
carry my bag and mm-hmm. hold like this, then yeah. I thought, okay, this is like a clear confirmation. <laughs> this is a mine. sign. <laughs> it's a sign that she's mine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, that's, I didn't know that part. Oh, oh yeah. Sure. Oh, sorry, I, like, uh, I tried to show you how God tried to, co- to confirm things. Confirm to you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, and then, okay, I think to make the sh- uh, story a little bit shorter, yeah. uh, you c- continue to pursue her, and then, of course, uh, f- from her side, she felt that was also uh, led by God. Yes. And then you got, eventually, you got married. Yes, yes. Uh, exactly. Last year, December, mm. we were there, it was a beautiful. 16th of December. Uh, yeah, 16th yeah. of December, so now it's going to be almost. Like uh, four five, 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 four months, five yeah. months. No, yeah. f- four months. Yeah, we just crossed four months. Yes. Uh, so you freshly married. Uh, yeah. And then, yeah, God answered your prayer, right? Like, so you prayed for uh, provision. Yes. You know, God uh, created provision for you. Yes. Uh, you entered into ministry. You yes. Know, f- like, w- with your full time. Yes. And then uh, God gave your wife. Yes. Uh, uh, no. So. <laughs> I have a lot of testimonies to yeah. share. <laughs> so God answered all of your prayers yes, actually. during that time, and which yes. is beautiful that God is faithful, and I think He is always going to fulfill His promise. Amen. Um, and also the Bible says that you know, God is uh, he, he's willing to fulfill the desires of our hearts. Right? Yeah, like, actually. Like, you know, when we are in line with His will, yes. you know, we can ask Him of uh, anything, anything yes. and, you know, and He's going to grant those things to us. Yeah. Uh, of course, we understand within His will. Yeah. And I think uh, it's beautiful. And I want to conclude here. Just um, uh, it's, it's beautiful that, you know, through all your life, God has led you. And then eventually now you ended up in, the, in your calling, right? Like just yeah. um, being a minister. You know, we are both missionaries yes. uh, serving uh, in different parts of Tanzania. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing God move. And it started, you know, with you uh, responding to God and just saying yes to Him and, and, and God, allow God to prepare you for yes. what He has for you. Yes. And along the way, um, you know, God take, took care of everything you needed. Yes, yes. You know, like you, you took care, of, you know, of your needs. Yeah. You took care, you know, you were sitting in a, in a very nice home, you know, yeah. like here and you have your own home, yeah. you know, um, and you have a wife, you know. So I just... Uh, the beauty of you know following God is you know He's gonna continue to take care of you, and for you it's just the beginning. Yes, yes you know yes. just we've so been together. There's a lot of things to yeah. to come because I you know every step we have to enjoy every step that God yeah. is taking us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't need to be in a rush. Yeah, yeah. So uh, one of the most important thing in my life mm-hmm. is just to to learn how to wait. Mm. You see, you don't need to be in a rush mm. because you're ending up doing some stuff which is not yeah. good. You mm. see, trying to to push things mm. which will never mm. bring fruits. Yeah. So when I, I I really like to say like this, when time is uh, when time is right, God is going to make things happen. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's a good word. Yeah, I think it's a beautiful word, um, especially for those who are watching us. And you know, maybe you feel like there's a calling or there's promises that God has for you. Yes. Um, yeah, just you know, continue to step out um, in, faith. in faith. Be faithful with what God is giving you. Yes. And then also, of course, um, um, allow God, you know, to work for you. And then bring things into completion. Yes. Don't try to go ahead and make things happen. Oh, yeah. uh, there's a story from the Bible that I always think about is when uh, God called Abraham. Abraham, yes. yes. I was thinking and, the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he promised him a child. And so, yeah. like, yeah, I'm going to make a great nation out of you. Yes. And then, of course, Abraham and Sarah, they were not able to wait, you yeah. know, for God. So they tried to do things, make, make happen. And yeah. uh, Ishmael was born. Yeah. And uh, that was not the promise of God. Yes. Um, of course, God did not, uh, it didn't hinder God, you know, mm. to continue fulfill yeah. um, what he promised to fulfill through Abraham's life. But it created a problem for them. Yes. And then also, um, you know, um, it was done in the flesh. Yes. So, yeah, and I think it's important for us to I know. I need to add something there. Mm-hmm. The Bible says God has exalted his promises more than his name. Mm. 
Mm, yes, wow. in the Psalms, mm -hmm. somewhere said, God has exalted his promises more mm. than his name. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, which means that God is going to fulfill his promise. Obvious. <laughs> There's no way he's not going to do like it. It's like raining come to germinate some co mm. crops. Yeah. Yeah. So it will never come void until mm. it accomplishes what God has sent. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so David, uh, maybe a last word if you have uh, for the people that are watching us. And most of them, you know, these are people that, like you and I, we are very simple. Yeah. Um, you know, we, you know, we just want to serve God. Yeah. How would you encourage someone, you know, to pursue uh, the will of God for their lives? Yeah, what I can say, uh, humbleness is a key factor of God to, uh, to raise us from, uh, from n nothing into something. Mm. So even as today you see us serving the Lord, we came from a place of unknown mm -hmm. and now we are knowing mm -hmm. by different people. Not, mm. not like uh, bring our names there, but mm. we bring Jesus, mm. you see. So if your aim is to bring Jesus somewhere, mm. God is going to make even your name known. Mm. Yeah. You see, like mm -hmm. Abraham, yeah. he tried to do things which make God known mm -hmm. and make God make his name known. Mm. You see? So I would like to say like, now you need to take the step of faith mm. and to be available yeah. because God is waiting for people who are available, mm -hmm. not people who are, who are already are well prepared yeah. because you can be very well prepared like you went into the big universities mm -hmm. taking theologies mm -hmm. having to, we talk about the things of god mightily mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. whatever but if you are not available yeah god cannot use you there is a mm -hmm. say said work done is equal to zero is <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a say from a physics subject mm -hmm. uh, work done is equal to zero, mm. like you are there studying a lot of stuff concerning God, but you are not available mm. because it's like the it's like a seed which was poured on the rock mm. does not bring out any yeah. fruit. So mm. it's supposed to be like the uh, seed which was poured mm. on the fertile ground, mm. so it can produce much fruit yeah. for the Lord. Amen. So. Harvest is plentiful, the workers are few, so you are welcome, guys. <laughs> yeah. So you can serve the Lord, and we can see like multitude of people come before God yeah. because Jesus is waiting people from different uh, tribes. Mm. Jesus is waiting people from different tongues, mm. from different nations, like you see now. Mm. Germany and Tanzania. Mm. So God is waiting for you, American, <laughs> for you, Australian, for you. Uh, Cuban and the <laughs> people from all over the world so mm. we can serve the Lord together yeah. and be aligned with His will, mm. not to our own will. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, and I think, like you said, is be available. And yes. I think that's the key. Just allow God to use you the way He wants to use you. Actually. And Surrender your plans, yeah. your th everything <laughs> to God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and the, the name of this podcast is Hidden Voice. And I think... Uh, of course, right now we're here uh, talking uh, to each other on a, on a video um, and um, you hear this story, you, they, they heard your story, David, yeah. uh, but there's so many people out there that are available, that are serving God, God is using them, but no one hears their voice, you know, no one knows about them, but they're yes. there yes. and God is using them. And it's not about being uh, known by others, but it's actually known by God and allowing Him to use you. So you can be that person, you know, no one knows about you, you know, no one maybe uh, knows your name, mm. but it's not about you. It's about uh, you being available to God yes. and uh, being the hidden and be used by Him. Uh, yeah. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and listening to us. And I hope it was encouraging to you. It was definitely encouraging to me yes. to again hear your story, David. Yeah, and yeah. Um, may God continue to use you. Um, and as, uh, as especially also those who are watching us. Up to, uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.